computer. Right. Hello, everyone. Welcome, members, and welcome everyone who's here for the first time. Um, I'm Sinisan Indaba. I'm the founder and co-organizer of Our Ladies Khabaruni, which started last year. We have Yanina, who is our speaker today. She'll be talking about how R is important and the differences it is from Excel and the operations that you can do in R. So before we can get started, I just want to share my screen. Right. So we'll be using the Etherpad. So the Etherpad will be helping us jot down any notes we'll be taking throughout the session. The link is provided in the Zoom, in the Zoom chat. So in the Etherpad, we have our meetup link. We have the, the link to the Zoom, our Twitter handle here. Oh, good. The internet is fast, so that's a good thing. So you can see our Twitter account page. If you want to go ahead and follow us. And we also have a Facebook page, which is very, well, in Botswana, people follow a lot of pages in Facebook. And we also have a link linked in page. It's so important to follow these pages because you can get to see a lot of announcements. So you can follow us and get notifications and subscriptions. We're part of the Our Ladies Global community organization, which helps with ladies and women who are using R. You can see the R Ladies Global website. You can click on the Twitter and the GitHub and the Slack to, well, not the Slack, not now, only, only if you remember, but you can follow them on Twitter and GitHub and other social media pages. And Yanina is actually, I, I think I've said this several times, she's actually one of the leads of Our Lady. So she's part of the team leads of Our Ladies Global. And if you've missed any of the previous events or the meetups, you can go on the YouTube channel for Our Ladies. There are a lot of presentations made from different chapters around the world. There's some in Nairobi, in Abuja, Nigeria, in Australia. And um, Yanina, I don't know if there are any in Argentina, Cologne. Yes. And the Oh, they are? <laughs> Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires. <laughs> oh, all right. Yes. And at the bottom, we have the details of what the, uh, what the talk is about. So you can go ahead and read the details. We have different resources, how to get started in R. We have the rproject.org. It describes what R is all about, where, which uh, the sites you can use to download it and different resources at the side if you want to get started. The same with the R for data science, written by Hardly Wickham. I've never met Hardly Wickham before. Yanita, Yanina, have you met him before? Yes. Oh, you have? Oh, okay. The same. This site can't be reached. Okay. Well, there, there it is. Right. Yes, there. I, I was part of the team who translate this book to Spanish. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, and we meet uh, him when he came to Chile. Uh, the, one of the country that is next to Argentina for Latinar for our conference in Latin America, and we all the team we meet the author there. He's a really nice person. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. Oh, all right. And any other resources you can click on them later. And at the bottom we have our roll call space. So if you haven't, you can go ahead and write your name and affiliation country that you're coming from, and if you want to follow. Um, Yanina, I think she'll add her contacts uh, in the chat or in the etherpad. And uh, if you have, have any questions throughout, and if you want to stay anonymous, you can write your questions down under the question section and the announcements that I want to get to. So in October, later in the month, we'll be having our next meetup session. We'll be having a, the speaker, we'll be having Dr. Manika Lamic La Lamba. She's the writer of which is going to come up soon. Well, she wrote a textbook called Text Mining for Information Professionals. So she'll be speaking about sentiment analysis using R. And you can go ahead and find the time. You can see right about the time when you'll be, when what time it will be at in your time zone, depending where you are. Because it's set to UTC. And because we're in Khaboroni, Botswana, Africa, it's set to two o'clock. Oh, yeah, it's set to two o'clock. 
And if you've missed any of our previous sessions, you can also click on our, or go to our YouTube page, Our Ladies Chavaroni, to just you catch up on any of the sessions that you've missed. And our, our another our group, which is called on our users, is having their session next week, Saturday, also on Meetup. So you can follow the link and you can go ahead and attend it. So what Meetup is, it's this online social media place where you can network and find other groups that have meetings online or they talk about discussions and they also post announcements there. So that's why we need Meetup, but also to keep in touch with members, people like us. Thank you and me. We also have the Africa Map Art, which is on Twitter. They have, I think they're having an event next, in two weeks time on the 24th. I don't know if it's in two weeks time. You can also follow them to catch up on your announcements. Okay, let me hurry up here. I think I'll continue with the announcements. I'll start at Tidy Tuesday and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and hand it over to Yanina. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. It is good morning for me in a sunny Saturday here. So good day for everybody. Uh, you are in the afternoon or in the night or more early than, than me. Uh, the, as Semi Sunny say, the, the idea is to introduce you to R and show how you can perform some of the tasks that we usually do in Excel in, in R. So I'm going to share my screen. I hope you are seeing uh, my slides. Um, when you see me watch to this side, it, it is because I move you or, or, and your videos there. And I usually going to try to talk to you there. And, and I also going to have the chat. So if you have any questions or any comments, uh, I will be trying to pay attention to that too. So first thing, um, everyone is welcome to work with a tool that is more useful for the tax day that you have to perform. So if for some tasks you need Excel, you're going to use that. If for some task you need R, then you are going to use R. And if for other task you are going to need Python, that's okay too. So the first thing is for each kind of work in the analysis pipeline, perhaps you are going to need to use several tools and it is okay to use any of them. There is no this kind of war between tools or which is better of what. They serve to different uh, purpose. So you, you are going to have different goals. Um, here are an Excel party together because we are all friends. <laughs> this, this artwork is by Alison Horst and other our ladies. Uh, the third thing is because we have good time today, uh, I will let you, uh, it is on the, it is on the etherpad, also in the slide this link, let's go to see this. This is a full workshop uh, from a spreadsheet to R. Uh, you have here the code, the website and a video. Uh, this one is in English and this same version is also in Spanish. But here the, the workshop is between two and three hours. So if you want to, you can go through all the extended material of what we are going to see today in, in a short time. So here is the, the, the website and you can see uh, all the content. I developed this uh, material, this workshop with Pau Corrales, who is also in Argentina and is also part of Our Ladies Global and the Carpentries too. So saying this, uh, we are going to go to and to start to use it, I create this project uh, in our studio cloud in case that you still don't have our studio and R installed on your machines. And um, if you click there, we are going to use our studio and R in the cloud. 
this is free, um, but you need to create an account in case that you don't have an account. Uh, you can use some of your emails to log in. And what you are going to see is something like this. Are, are you seeing my R Studio now on, on the screen? Yeah, we see it. Awesome. So you are going to see something like this. Perhaps some of you have this menu on the left. If you click on these three lines, uh, then the menu is going to disappear and you have more space on, on the screen. This is exactly the same that you see on our studio on your desktop, uh, but in an Internet Explorer. So that's the only difference. Most of the time, when the first time you uh, start and enter to our studio, you see something like this. You see three parts on the on the screen. Uh, the console is uh, where you can. I I going to write down left. You can give our some instruction, and it's going to be. Uh, execute immediately and give you the result. So this is kind of people who are older than me, perhaps remember um, BOS, the, the operation system, the, the shell, uh, the Unix shell is like this. You have a prompt and a cursor and you write the functions uh, and the instructions to R and R answer you immediately with, with the result. This is not very uh, comfortable to work when you need to do a lot of things. Uh, so we are going to see how we can start to write different kind of functions and instructions to R and then save it to reuse. The, the other part that the, this screen of R Studio has is um, several tabs, the environment, history, connections, tutorial, in the environment, we are going to have everything that has to do, I'm going to erase this, everything that we have on memory. So as an Excel, we have the, the cells, uh, for example, A1, and we add there some content, uh, we can have some functions, we can have some values, some formulas. We can do something similar in R, saving this in variables. So for example, I'm going to create a variable that is called total. And I can say total. And this symbol is like the equal. I'm going to say the two plus two. So the difference between this and this is that I'm saving the result of this um, equation, this calculation on the total variable. And as you can see, I don't have the four here, but now I have in the environment a variable called total with the value four. So how I see what total has, I can see here, or I can write here total, press enter, and then I have the four in the same way that I have it when you write two plus two. So I can have in my in the memory of my computer to work a lot of objects, not only results uh, um, unique variables. I can have, for example, um, data sets to work. We are going to um, to work writing text and writing code to do this, um, to perform different tasks. So you have two options to work with code in R. One is uh, use R script, and the other is use R markdown. And we are going to 
I'm going to show you this second options are marked down uh, because I really like the fact that you can uh, mix uh, text and code and output as plot and tables and it look like more what you can do with Excel. Yeah, Excel is a really, or spreadsheet in general, they are really nice tools to uh, do data entry, to do quick plots, um, and to do some analysis. Probably if you are used to use it, uh, you learn a lot of functions, uh, macros, uh, you can code inside Excel, you use five tables. We can do all this stuff in R, and the advantage of doing in R is that because this is a programming language and you have to write step by step what you did, for example, to build a report, you can share that with other people and they can follow this step by step or they can run the, the code and get the same result as you. So it's reproducible. When you use an interface with menu where you have to choose and click, um, then it's hard to reproduce that. The people who wants to do the same work that you did has to go through the same step and choose and do it every single time that you need to do that task. When you code, when you uh, program, whatever language you use, you do that one time and then you execute the code. You don't need to do this, I just file menu, then I choose this, then I change here. You don't need to do these steps, these menu choices, every single time that you need to do the work. So I prepare here uh, a report. You can download the project that I am using from here. In the case that you want to download this that I'm showing you, uh, that is in this zip file, or you can copy this uh, RStudio project on your RStudio Cloud and you get the, the same. So let's see, this is a, an Armadan document. As you can see, you have some part of the document with a blank. Uh, a white uh, background, a gray background, and um, we have the text in different colors, some in black, some in blue, some in green. So this is what we call a notebook or a literal programming where you have some code, the, the gray black background chunks are code and the white background are text. Let's, let's knit this. This is like run the document, render the document, so we can see what we see in uh, our Markdown report. So I click knit and my computer is working. Let me know if you see the output of the report. Yeah, the output is showing. Okay, so you see gentle penguins as a title, and then the we have this table, and then we have some plots. So let's go, let's try to see. Let me force over my screen. Let's try to identify what part of the code are showing in the, in the report. So for example, we have here title, chain to penguins, which is this text we have here. Then we have a chunk of code. Let's see what this do. And then we have this text. 
which is what we see here. So about the data is a title and uh, in our markdown, when we add this hashtag, uh, is going to be a less, um, a more small title. So in, in the second, third, or five, four, we can add as many hashtags as, as we want to. Then, for example, uh, Palmer penguins, uh, it is in bold. So you indicate in our markdown that this, you want this uh, phrase in bold with two star, with this symbol, the star, asterisco. Um, I don't know how you name this in English. Then you have, for example, Farmer Station is a link. So for uh, write a link, you have to use these brackets and then parentheses and the URL. And it's going to show like this on the, on the report. Then we have some code here that produce this table. So this chunk of code here shows like this in the report. And here is the uh, power of R. You can have the text explaining your report and the code that create the tables and the plot inside the same document. I don't know how you work in Excel, but um, usually we create the plot in Excel, we copy, we paste to Word, and then we create the PDF for our boss. So you don't have to do all this because you have all in the same document and you only show in the output what you want to show. Um, some, sometimes when you do this copy and paste to, to, the, to the report, uh, you figure it out that you have some mistake on the plot, uh, or perhaps you don't like the colors and you need to change it and you need to go back to the spreadsheet, all, do all these changes and then copy and paste it again to the report. That is, you don't need to do that kind of a step switching between different software uh, because you can have everything on the same document on R. And we are going to see that we can also change the, the output. Uh, right now we are seeing an HTML, like a web page for my report, but we can change and request that this, uh, the output can be a Word document or can be a PDF. Uh, so we are going to see how to do that in, in a few minutes. So then we have more text, which is this text we have here, the one that is in the line 33. And then we have some code, and this code create this plot. And then we have some more text in the line 52, which is the text we have here. And then we have, again, a chunk of code that create this plot. And the most beautiful part of this is that I just um, share with you the zip file of the project. If you uh, unzip that file, um, open the project, the RStudio project, and open this file and need you should see exactly the same that I have here. And that is really powerful because if you have to do a similar report, you don't need to do it from scratch. You just take my report, change, for example, the species. We use Gen2 here. And let's say that Geoffrey need to do the, the same report for Papua penguin. So Geoffrey only changed Papua from uh, where Gen2 is, and that's it. And they have the same report. And they don't need to do this from the scratch one more time. So the reproducibility steps and the fact that we have like kind of reset beam for our, for our report with a step by a step what we have to do is also going to help us in the future. I don't know about you, but I, I have to work in several projects at the same time. So sometimes one month I'm working in a project and then I have to stop that project, go to work to other and go back to the initial one in four months. 
oh no, my God, how hard is to remember what you were doing. So coding, as this has everything that I need to do the plot, to write the text, everything is there and it is more easy to remember what were we doing and what are the steps that I have to follow? Because I have to write this so the computer can do it too. So that is also um, um, an advantage to code uh, that you have everything you need in the same place. So let's go to see a little bit about the, the code. Please let me know if you have any questions uh, about this, but let's try to see uh, more details on the on the document. I say to you that we can have a different kind of output. In the line tree, in the Yelm, uh, in the head of the document, we have this parameter, which is, that is called output, and now say HTML document. If I change here, HTML by PDF, and I need the document. Now, let me know if you are seeing the PDF. Yeah, the PDF has I been generated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So look how with the same source, I can have different format as output. I can do the same if I write Word and I go and click Knit to, to run and render the, the document. If you are doing this on your local computer, probably will open Word because we are working on the cloud in our studio cloud is asking us permission to download the, the file. So I'm going to download. And here it is, and let's open. So we can see the, the Word document. Okay, it's, it's working. My computer is a, a little slow. <laughs> We have to be patient. Yeah, patient. sometimes when it, 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 it's as though we can tell it's online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Curious, I, are you seeing my word uh, open now? Okay. So here is, one more time, the, the report. So it's pretty straightforward to change the, the output and, and to have this in different formats. And you can see the plot looks the same. Uh, so it's a, I think that this is one of the most nice uh, advantage of using our markdown. So let's go to try to understand the, the, the code here. In this first chunk of setup, uh, we are loading the package uh, that I need to use in my report. Packages are a collection of functions and sometimes data uh, that brings um, more functionality to, to the language. So in this case, I'm loading the tidyverse and the package read XL uh, because we are using function from these two package. This, this piece of code here in the line 20 is uh, loading a CSV uh, file. It's reading the data that we have in this, in this folder in my project. The folder is called data and the, the file is, is called penguin CSV. So with this function, read, read slash CSV, 
I load in to the penguin uh, object this file. I'm going to execute that line so we can see how this object is created on the environment and we can see what this um, data set has, what information it has. So I'm going to execute this uh, with control enter. And now I have this uh, penguin on my environment. I'm going to click there and we can see here the data set. We can look in for something, for example, I can say, okay, I want uh, all the, um, all the uh, rows, the cases that are on this Torgersen uh, Iceland, for example. So right now it's filtering and it's showing me one of 15 of 52 entries that were filtered for 344 total entries. So I'm seeing here um, the, the data set that I'm using to create the report. We can also um, load other kind of data, not only CSV. For example, I, I have here an, uh, an Excel uh, file. So Probably if you are working with Excel, uh, you are going to need to bring your Excel files to uh, R to work with them. So we can do that in a very similar way that we read um, the CSV file. Vamos a leerlo. Uh, we are going to read it. I'm going to write here in the line 22 the code. I'm going to call my variable to, to say the data of the Excel files, uh, penguin slash XLS. I'm going to use again the, the arrow to assign and the, the function to read an Excel file is read because we're going to load and read some data and then you have read excel for example yes as a as a function and then we have to say the file that we want to read and in this case the file is data because it is in the folder data here and the name is penguin.xlsx. So penguin. And I'm going to run one more time this line of code. Control Enter. Uh, Okay, I have an error here. It's telling me uh, this path doesn't exist. And my mistake was, was I forget an S on the name of the file. Yes, you see this error. Um, when I execute the, the line on the, on the, the 20 uh, line, I get a green mark because was, everything was okay. And here I have a red mark which brings me memory from the school, <laughs> from the teacher that used the red <laughs> to say no. Um, and I have the error here. So reading this is telling me, hey, I can't find this file that, that you are telling me. So I check and I figured out that I made a mistake in the name. So let's see now, control enter. And I, I have the green mark. I don't have the mistake anymore. And I have my penguins slash uh, XLS X to, to, to the, the environment. Deborah, if you want to add um, more than one Excel file, you can read 
you can read them individually like this, or I can then share with you um, a code. You can loop through all the files. For example, you have 200 files that you need to read. Then there is a way that you can read the name of the 200 files and then go through them and read it with two lines of code. I can share that uh, if that is what you need. Uh, but if there are three, four files, probably you are going to do this. But if you have too much, um, too many, I mean too many, then you can loop and make their load all for you. I can share that uh, after. <laughs> he has too many files. No, I understand. I, I, I have to work. I said 200, but, but because <laughs> I have to work with 200 files one. And I also have to uh, merge together in one uh, data set. So I will share that. I will share that. Okay. Um, another things that, that we can do that we usually do on, on a spreadsheet is to have um, summaries. Uh, we, we have with the pivot tables, we have this chance to uh, calculate average, uh, we calculate totals, we calculate max and mean. So we have this uh, kind of calculation also in R, in the tidyverse, we are going to use the tidyverse and the, the code that we have here in the lines 24 to 27 do exactly that. So let's going to try to, to read this one. Uh, we are going to save these uh, aggregations in an object that is called summary. We are going to use penguins and then appear these symbols here that is called the pipe, one of the pipe. And, and the pipes uh, reads uh, and then. So you are saying he take penguins, my data set, and then pass to group by, by species, and then summarize, count, get the quantity, and in mean body mass, uh, calculate the mean. So we are taking a data set and we pass that data set to a function and that is group by, and then we take the result of that function a pass to another function that is summarized. And inside summarize, we do some calculations. Let's see how summary looks like. I execute pressing control enter. And summary looks like one row by a species, a column that is called count, that has how many cases we have for each one of these species, and another um, column that is called mean body mass that has the average for that species. This is pretty similar to what we do with, with pivot tables in a spreadsheet. So what if I have the, the, the biggest uh, value, for example? What if I want to know um, the, the most uh, heavy <laughs> penguin? I can add another, um, another new column that is called maximum. And I can say max and the function mass, I'm going to use body mass g. One of the nice things that have our studio because it is an IDE is this helps when we start to write the code. That is also really nice. That is called IntelliSense and 
and it's going to suggest you functions, names, variable names, object names um, that are related to what you are writing. And it's going to give you also uh, in this yellow square, a help on how to use the function. So I, I want this, the body mass G, which is a variable. What do you think is going to happen now with the summary table? Because I add this line of code here, right on the chat. What do you think that this is going to change? Or how it's going to change? Or if it's going to change at all? What do you think that this line in the is going to do? Will this place will this play a single value? It's going to the, the max function is going to take the maximum value of the body mass G. So it's going to show me a single value for each species, because I'm doing a group by here. I'm saying to R, please group by, by species. Species is this column here on math data and has more than one value. It has Adele, it has Chen Tu, and it has Chin Strap. So this this calculation of the max of the maximum value of body mass is going to be done for each one of the value on the species column. This time it's going to have three values, three, three value, one for each species. Let's see. Let's see what this does. Let's see summary. I have, a, we have a Dale, Chinstrap, and Chentu. We have one more column name that is maximum before we only have count and mean body mass. And we have an A, we have a value and we have an A. Okay, what happened here? The, the problem is that if we have some missing value in our data, when you use the functions and do the calculation, the correct answer is uh, a missing value because you actually don't know what the result is because you have missing value in your cases. But we need a number there. The, we, we, it is not useful to have this NA. So how we tell R that we want to calculate this, um, this value without taking into account the missing value. Well, we are going to use a parameter, the function that is called NA or M, and we are going to say true. Yes, exactly, exactly. I, there I'm seeing uh, Chignesh, which is saying exactly the same on the chat. Let's see if this works. Or we want to summary. And now we have a value for each one of the species. What do you think is going to happen if I remove this group by here? This idea of uh, do everything by species. If I do this, I have a comment. So for R, this line of code doesn't exist now as it's not going to execute. What do you think is going to happen to, to summary to the table? What is going to be the result? Is the same data set? Penguins? Yeah, we all we always use penguin. If I remove Group by we are going to have the count 
which is the number of rows that I have, the average body mass and the maximum of the body mass for the full data set. And we are going to have one single column as an outcome because I'm not grouping my cases by any other column. So if I see summary now, I have I don't have the species anymore as a column because I'm not grouping, I'm not grouping my cases. And I have, well, we have 344 um, cases, which is if you, if we watch on the environment, oh, I'm sorry. Um, if we watch here on the environment, it's the number of observations that I have in the penguin and the body, uh, the average of the body bath is 4.2 and the maximum is uh, six kilo for this penguin. So the group by uh, allow us to uh, group my cases by some of the other columns. Uh, for example, I can also group by, by uh, Iceland, for example. Let's see group, group by there and see how the summary changed. If we go to summary. Now I have the name of the Iceland instead of the name of the species. We can do a lot, a lot of these uh, different calculations. We, we can create, we mutate instead of summarize. We can have mutate as a verb, and then we can create new columns doing calculation using the other columns. That is also a, a, a task that we usually do on a spreadsheet. And this final code that we have in this chunk here, in this chunk, we read the data with these two lines. Then we do some calculations and summary, like the pivot tables. And this summary now, we are uh, giving some format so we can see as, as a really nice table on the report. We are doing this with, need, with the need package, the cable function. Uh, yeah, yeah, Alberto, you can, you can have more than one um, variable on the group by. We can, for example, do Iceland and sex, for example. And uh, yeah, I think that is sex is the, yes, the variable name is sex. If we do that, then summary now is showing the Iceland, the sex, and the calculation for these two variables. So you can do that in any level with two, three, four, five. <laughs> You're welcome, de nada. <laughs> okay, we can also filter, um, like when, when we choose the filter on the columns on, in, in the spreadsheet, and then we choose one or several values and the cases, the, the spreadsheet only show me the cases we filter. We can also do that. For example, in the code, in the chunk code that we have in the line 40, we are filtering here. So we only are plotting, ggplot is the, is the function to plot. We are only plotting the cases of the Gen 2 species. If I execute this, we are going to see here is the, the plot. Let's change the species. Um, let's, let's use a day. Mm, 
if I run this, then we have a different plot because we have a different set of data. So we can filter here and we can filter for any other variable too. And when we filter, we, if we filter numbers, for example, we can use greater than, less than. Uh, we can also filter for something that is different too. We can use several conditionals here for the filter verb. Okay, we are approaching to our time. Um, I know there is uh, a lot of things that we didn't see, but I want to give you uh, the chance to, to make questions and we can see some of your questions uh, here. Um, as I say, on the web page that I shared with you, um, you have more of this in detail and you can go through this step by step and, and you can check how to build the plot, how to build the, the table and how to do more calculation and the use of more verbs. Uh, but I don't want to steal you more of your time. So then send me, you, you tell me how we continue. Mm, I think because we started late, I think we, you can, I think you can have uh, 15 minutes because we started okay, late okay. and I took <laughs> long with the introduction. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Great. Then, then, then let's try to do um, some plot. What do you think? Do you want to plot some data? Mm -hmm. Let's go to try to, to construct a, a ggplot. Okay, one of the other really beautiful things that, that um, uh, the tidyverse and the, the R has is visualization. The how we can construct plot on R are one of the biggest advantage and the, the visualizations look really, really pretty. So let's try to build um, a plot from the scratch. For this one, I'm going to create a new file, armor down. Going to be plot. Now I'm in a different document. I'm going to remove everything from here. I'm going to load the package. I diverse. And I'm going to load the data for every time that we create an R markdown, we need every single time we need to load the package and load the data that we are going to use. Yeah, I need to do that. So when we need the, the document, um, the the rendering of the document run all these chunks and brings to my to the memory of my computer everything that I need for the report. So I'm going to read CSV, my data, penguins, CSV. So here I have the data that I need. And then I'm going to add here plotting. And I'm going to add a chunk of code. I use Control Alt and the letter E. This letter. With that, you can add this empty chunk of code and we can start to try to do um, a plot. So the, um, the function to do a plot is ggplot. And then as we can see in this yellow square where we have some help, the first thing that ggplot needs, it is the data. Then we are going to mapping some aesthetic of the plot to values on my data frame. And this has to do with the grammar of graphics. The grammar of graphics say to us that we plot 
uh, data mapping aesthetics and aesthetics is the color, the symbol, the scales, uh, the size of the symbols. Um, so some aesthetics, some geometric part of the, of the some characteristic of our plot to the data, the variables that I have in my data set. And then we add a geometry, which is what kind of plot I'm drawing. It is a point, it is a line, it is a bar, it is a histogram. So the first things that I'm going to give, it is the data. So the data we are using is penguins. Then I'm going to give the aesthetics. And the first things that we need to say to every single plot is our axis. Uh, what is the X and what is the Y on, on our plot? So we are going to plot the, 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 the length and the depth of the build of the of our penguins. Let me see how was the names of the variables. Build length and M and build depth. So So I write there, let's see what this code um, do if I run. Oh, I, I write, yes, because I always do the same mistake. So for now, with these functions, the only thing that I have is a Canva with my y and x axis with some of the values already, but I don't have any, any plot yet because this is the layer of the data with the axis and they, then I need to add the layer of the geometry. What kind of plot are we are going to do? All the geometry is called geom slash, and then we have the name of the geometry. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot of options: bulk plus, contour, density, dot plot. We are going to use the most simple one, which is geom point. And if I run this, now I have the points in my axis. And we have here a warning that say that are removed two rows containing missing values. So probably, or in this variable or this one, we have some NA and then ggplot can put that point on the plot because one of the coordinate is missing. So it's removing those cases. So what is we, we, we can do? We can, for example, we know that we have uh, different species, different Iceland, different sex, and we see like groups on this uh, cloud plot that we have here. So let's try to see if some of these variables have anything to do with these potential groups that we see. We can add an aesthetic on the geometry. So we are going to say AS color, and we are going to try to paint the dots by the species. When I run this, now we have the points colored by the species, and we have a legend that tell us 
uh, what color is which species on the on the right. What else we can do? Well, as Chichi plot is a layer, have this idea of layers when we construct the plot, the data layer, the aesthetic, the, the axis layer, the um, other aesthetics like the color, the size. Um, we, we can add several geometries. So we can have a, a line and a, a geom line and a geom point in the same ggplot. Um, we can have a bar and a line, um, a geom call. Uh, so we, we can start to add layers to this plot. One of the layers that we can add, for example, to this is to see, um, uh, to adjust a, a model as smooth to, to each one of these, uh, of these groups. Uh, to see how these points uh, behave. So we have this geometry. If we do this and we don't add any parameter, we have a smooth, <laughs> we have here a model. The GCPROT are going to choose which model are going to adjust to, to the to the data set based on the number of cases that we have. But we can also um, force that they use, for example, uh, a linear model. And we can also request that they do for each one of the species and not for the entire data set. How we do that? Well, we can say again using the DIS that the color is for the species. So we can request that this uh, split for each one of the species that we that we have. And then we can say that the method of the model that we are going to adjust is going to be, for example, a linear model. The, the default one for this uh, number of cases was uh, lowest. Yeah, we have here which one, the, which one, uh, which method the GMS would use. So if we do this, now we have a linear model for each one of our species and um, we have this on the plot. Then we can do um, a lot of uh, personalizations about how this uh, plot looks. I think that it's already pretty nice. Uh, that looks really nice, but I mean, we can change the name of the variable, we can add some title, we can change the colors. So I'm going to do that um, um, because of the, the time I'm going to uh, copy uh, some of this, uh, this code. So you can see here I'm using a scale color manual to set values for each one of these species. Um, we have three species, so that is why we have a list of three different colors. So here, this change is look more beautiful. Mm, I like this color. And then we have for adding a title and change the name of the variable. We have a function that is called labs and for, for labels and labs has a lot of, it has a parameter for each one of the elements on, on, my, on my plot. So for the title, penguin will mentions, 
if I run this, now we have the title here and we can add several more. So I'm going to copy this one so I don't have to write and you can see a more beautiful um, plot. We are going to add a subtitle. We are going to add a, a title for the axis, X, Y, for the um, uh, legend, color, and shape, which is the aesthetic. This color, this shape are going to change the um, the, the legend. So we change the title of the aesthetic that we are using here. Yes, we are using color. We change here color. And now uh, we have the title, the subtitle, the, the name on the axis are better than the name of the variable. And we have a nice title for legend. Um, we have the, the dot underline together on the same legend because these are the two geometries that we have. So we can do a really beautiful plot with not so many lines of code. Okay. Um, I think that for a first plot, it is a nice one. <laughs> As you see, there is a lot of things to, to see uh, and to do, but this is more or less what I want to show you today. Um, and let me know if you have more questions or comments. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, thank you so much, Janina. That was very insightful. I liked how you showed the the linear <clears throat> and the clusters. <clears throat> That's something that you can't do in Excel. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I I think that the most um uh, the most useful part is actually that you have everything in the same doc, mm -hmm. and it's true that you can go back six, seven months after you use it for the last time and go through this and understand what you were doing and replicate your work, uh, which is pretty hard to do in a spreadsheet, especially if it is a, compli a complex one, and especially if you don't build the spreadsheet, that sometimes that happens. You inherit things and then you need to understand that and it is more hard, um, uh, at least it is more easy if you have this kind of step-by-step -step in code, in R or Python or whatever language you, you use. Yeah, that's true. And now that R Studio has been changed to Posit, is it going to be any different? Um, are we going to have to, how can I say this? Are we going to have to relearn R or are we going to have to relearn Posit? Is it Posit or Posit? I see that it's Posit, and it is the name of the of the of the company. Um, they are now um, uh, they they launched this year what is called Cuarto. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write that, uh, okay. which is kind of the evolution of Armor Down. But you can migrate Armor Down to this. Uh, I'm oh. still using Armor Down. I have a lot of my work for build on Armor Down, but Cuarto is um, also think about publication. So you, you can do books, uh, like you can do on R Markdown too, uh, but Quarto has some new um, features that the, the promises is more easy to create publication ready documents. So if you are writing your thesis, you are writing a book or you have a blog, probably Quarto to, is try to start to try to understand Quarto is a good idea. And there is a really nice um, blog post right by Alison uh, Pressman Hills 
uh, that explain how to go from Armadan to Cuarto in a really straightforward way. So um, I'm still don't do anything with Cuarto, but I need to write a, a guidelines and I'm going to start that from scratch using this. So I force myself to learn <laughs> this, but um, I think that is like that. I, I think that working in armor down it is still a good idea and a lot of people have their workload on this and i don't see a need to change something that is working and that is still going to maintain uh, because they say they are not going to uh left uh, armor down out mm -hmm. so for now we are going to live with the with both solutions uh, but as always, I think that if you have a new project that you are going to start from scratch and you have the time and the willingness to, to learn, probably it's a good idea to try Quarto. Uh, okay. But it's not and like you need to change because in two months you don't have more support for Armour Down. That is not going to, to happen soon. That's right. And for, so for those of you who are not aware, of what Quattro is, there are some very good videos in the R Ladies Global and um, channel. There's a question in the Etherpad from Deborah. She's asking, can you please provide the initial website link to the free workshop to practice? And can you yes. copy your code so we can read several files or upload several files to R? Yes, yes. I promise uh, the code for that in a minute because I'm already have that um, uh, I've already have that code in some place. <laughs> so I need to open the project and copy and paste. So th there is the um, there is the full uh, workshop mm -hmm. and that is the version in, in English. Um, mm -hmm. And you have a video uh, for that workshop too that is in English with yes. this pronunciation that I have. <laughs> I hope you understand me. I know that I have a strong accent. <laughs> no, but... not at all. It's nice to oh, hear. Okay. <laughs> okay. And if we you. don't hear, yeah. who's this guy? And if we can't, if we're not able to hear, who is this who is writing in Alberta will be translating yes. for us? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alberto. Thank you. <laughs> Gracias. And for everyone yeah, else, so... the recording will be uh, made available in due time and there will also be a git a github with all the links and with all the tutorials and and um yadida's uh contacts um does anyone else have any more questions or if you want to make any announcements for other meetups at any other time uh i i, I want to share with you all um i'm now working for our open site which is a community that uh uh create um package for mm -hmm. for use for science and we are going to launch soon a champion program to choose people from all around the world but with focus on um groups of people that are usually excluded from okay. this space like uh, people like us from latin america from africa from asia that uh we don't belong to the call the the call nor a global norm. So please, if you want to uh, learn how to create package, if you want to then teach this to your community, if you want to learn how to run online events, if you want to have mentoring one on one from people from open site, please, uh, I'm going to share this with all of you. So if you like you, you apply, we are going to do a selection of two groups, one from uh, I think that we are going to start next year, but we are going to, to do the call this year, I, I hope. So if any of you are interested in this, uh, please, um, uh, I will keep you posted, but please apply. Um, we are going to try to, to choose people from all over the, the world to, to help them to grow so they can help to grow their own community. So this this is the the announcement that that I want to do and share with all of you. Yeah, the the idea is to to provide training, to provide a small stipend for the time, and to help them to become a contributor to open source project. And what we are going to ask in return is that you share that knowledge in your community. So that that is the, the idea. 
that's a fantastic opportunity. And I'll be also sharing the link in the GitHub and within the Meetup page. And for everyone else watching in YouTube, you can find it in the, the comments below. Um, Yanita, do you have any announcement from Carpentries? Sorry, I was just looking for the unmute button. No, not really. <laughs> no, not really from my side. Oh, okay. All right. And um, if you guys have any more comments and questions, you can write it in the chat. And uh, I just want to make, um, I just want to share my screen and just continue with, no, well, not to continue, but I just want to share a few announcements. How we can all see it. We, if you guys want to continue, with your practice, you can get involved with the Tidy Tuesdays, the workshops that happen every other week to practice on your, your analyzing of the data, the cleaning, and the data sets that are released every Monday. And you can showcase what you've done every Tuesday on the hashtag Tidy Tuesday on the Twitter space. Oh, this thing has gone down now. Can't find it. This thing has blocked me now. Blocked. Okay. I can't why you know when the top down thing is covering. I don't know how to how do I get there? Damn, okay, I'm gonna have to reduce it. Okay, maybe I should do this. Mm, right. And uh, the R Studio has become posit. We, Janina has talked about how R Studio is gonna change to posit. And if you also want to be a carpentry instructor, you wanna teach people how to use Python, you wanna teach people how to use R. You can become an instructor, and there are a few things that you need to follow through in order to be certified as an instructor. And all the links are in the etherpad. And uh, if you want to get in, if you want to get involved in other community organizations like our Open Science, there are some other or community organizations in Europe as well. And there's one particular institution called the Abdus Salam International. Center for Theoretical Physics. They have a scientific calendar and they have online and in-person events. So you can follow the link and look at the acti activities that you're interested in. And after finding an activity that you're interested in, you can register for the event and watch it online. And sometimes they do have in-person events. Like the past event was a summer school in Trieste, Italy. And they can even sponsor your, well, not sponsor you going there, but they can sponsor your stay and um, they can give you some, some pocket money for your upkeep. And I think that is all. And oh yeah, by, I just wanted to remind everyone that when we have these events, when we have these talks, we do follow an RDD's code of conduct. That means that if you have, if you're being harassed or you don't, you don't feel very comfortable during the event, so you feel offended, you can report uh, your complaints to, I don't know if you can see it here, you can report your complaints to reporting at ourladies.org and or you can send a message to ourladies Khabaroni at Khabaroni at ourladies.org. What raw material to learn? Oh, um, Yanina, what is this you, you just sent? I missed it. Yeah, that, that is more uh, more material to learn. Um, RSTD has an education web page. Um, okay. And you can choose if you're a beginner or you are uh, already know something about art or you are an expert, they have different kind of material that you can go through and, and practice and, and learn. So as you say that um, one of the things is to, is to have uh, how you continue learning uh, well, there is the, the my workshop there. If you go through my webpage, you are going to find a lot of uh, workshops that there are, are there for free. You can use it. You can use it for teaching, uh, and you can use it for <laughs> well, even if you teach and get paid for that and use my material. That's okay. You you can do it too. Uh, this will be really nice if you tell me because it's such a nice news when someone finds something that you did useful uh, for for them so but just just to know um and you can continue also with this uh, uh studio education material uh, they have really nice uh tutorials interactive tutorials that you can go through and, and learn 
the basis and the more advanced things uh, about R. So I, I really like that that um, resource to to learn. Right. Thank you so much, Janina. We I think everyone has all the resources. You can find them in the Etherpad, and we will be sharing the recording in the GitHub. And I'll be posting all the links in the comments for all of you who are watching in YouTube. And thank you so much for being here. I'm going to stop the recording. And yeah, we'll see you all soon. Thank you all for having me and for being here.